you. into the chat box and we'll answer questions at the end of the presentation. Um, additionally, if you're on your phone, you can hit star three and that will raise your hand in the WebEx. At the end, we'll unmute you if you'd like to ask a question um, or you can swing by the box 
Pawtuck Fire Station immediately after this presentation from 6.30 to 7.30. We'll be having an open house where you can speak with representatives from our company, uh, questions about the, about the project. Um, and if you don't want to submit questions tonight, you can submit questions in writing to the EDC, um, and we can respond to those uh, later in time. So with that, I'll turn it to Adam Stein, the Senior Vice President for the Wake Companies. Hi, everyone. Good evening. I hope everyone can hear me. Um, very happy to be here tonight to talk to you about a little bit about the wind companies that we do, similar type of projects we've developed um, around New England, uh, specific in Connecticut, and talk to you a little bit about the project tonight. My name is Adam Stein. I'm the city vice president with Wind Development. I'm here with Matt Rabina, who you just met, who's our project director for this project. Tim Mosticato, who runs our acquisitions team, and Laura Ritchie, who is a senior vice president on the residential side. Uh, we also wanted to uh, introduce our architect, General Jay, if you can uh, sit in here, say hello real quickly. For this project, Jay will be available later to answer questions. And thanks, of course, to the uh, Pawtucket, uh, Pawtucket, Pawtuck, Pawtuck Fire Station. Uh, for allowing us to host this venue tonight. So this is a great opportunity. We wish we could um, be here in person, uh, but I think tonight's presentation will do a very good job at describing the, the project that's ahead of us here. So thanks for having us. So a little bit about the wind companies. Wind companies was fund, uh, founded uh, about 50 years ago, 1971. It's a private company based out of Boston. We are long-term owners and developers. Managers and asset managers. We're not merchant developers where we come in to a municipality or, or a site and develop and sell. Our mission, if you will, is to invest into the property and into the community and these stakeholders. Most of the properties that Wynn has developed over the years have maintained in our stewardship for a long period of time. We manage and own 14 properties in Connecticut, over 2,000 units. And this is an area that we are excited to work in. We love the opportunity here. We love its location. We love its access to downtown and the commuter rail station and all of the items that we're going to talk to tonight are reasons why we're excited about this opportunity. Wind Companies has never missed a mortgage uh, payment, tax payment, never defaulted on a loan. That's something that we're proud to say. That's something we're proud to boast, uh, being in this business for as long as we are and operating and managing as many units as we have. So wind development has expertise in residential housing. It's developed over 250 units um, in Connecticut, Currently now, we're doing a project in Waterbury, Connecticut, which is an assemblage of two residential buildings that is undergoing an in-place renovation, and a property in East Haven, Connecticut, that Matt will describe in a little bit, that went through an RFP process through the town to take an old landmark asset, an old landmark building was, that was sitting vacant for 20 plus years, and turn it into 70 units of mixed income quality housing for residents age 55 plus. That's something that will come online in the next two months here. We have strong relationships with municipalities. We do joint ventures with nonprofits and CDCs. We also develop and own our own properties. We like innovative projects. We like complicated projects. A lot of the projects that we work on have multiple layers of financing as we'll describe tonight. We have three basic property types. Existing uh, communities, existing, existing apartments that we reposition and rebrand. Adaptive reuse projects like old mills and old schools that we turn into housing. And new construction projects similar to what we're, doing, we're proposing here at the Campbell Green site. We developed age-restricted housing, veterans housing, mixed income housing, we have strong and successful relationships with CHFA and DOH, which are the two state housing agencies in Connecticut. And we integrate with our property management company to deliver not just a nice building, but to long-term own and manage uh, for a long period of time. Oops. So a little bit about sustainability. This is something that's very important to the wind companies, and I think to a lot of people. 
on all of our developments, including Campbell Green, we look at utilizing water conservation measures, energy conservation better measures. We incorporate solar programs in a lot of our, not only properties that we manage and develop, but third party manage as well. We do retrofits, old boilers, old heating systems that we can retro retrofit and upgrade for energy efficiency on, again, the multitude, the multi-family uh, properties that we want to manage. We focus on race, waste reduction, training, and innovation. And we're uh, proud to say that we're a leader in all types of sustainability efforts on our portfolio. So I don't know, Matt, if you want to talk about some samples of projects, these are samples within sort of in and around New England that'll give a flavor for the type of development we're proposing here today. So Yeah, that, that's right. And uh, a lot of this features the work that we've done in Connecticut and some new construction, which uh, informs the, what we're proposing here at the Campbell Grain site. Um, so the first project that we want to talk about is uh, one that Adam just mentioned. Uh, the former high school in East Haven, uh, which we're currently finishing construction on, uh, called the Tyler. The project is 70 senior apartments uh, or units for 55 and over households. Um, at that property, we have a mix of income types, which is something that you'll hear a lot tonight in our presentation. Um, so everything ranging from uh, low and moderate income, income restricted units to unrestricted market rate units, which creates uh, an inclusive community. Uh, the project is about $22 million of construction costs and uh, $30 million of total costs. And it's the first project in the country that is, I'm sorry, in Connecticut, that's utilizing both historic tax credits, which are a very, um, a very scarce and uh, specific resources for, for historic structures and passive house, which is a green energy standard, which really focuses on a tight building envelope, very high energy efficiency um, and renewable energy on site. Uh, this is going to be the first uh, passive house certified project in the state, which is something that we're really proud of. And we expect to complete the project in September, which is uh, about 45 days from now. Um, we see tremendous interest in this project from the residents of, of East Haven who um, have been really supportive of the project along the way. Um, and just speaking to the, the quality of the kinds of buildings that, that we build, um, we're, we're still not done with construction and are half leased with the property. Uh, people are, are dying to, to move in. <laughs> well, <laughs> the, uh, the next project uh, we want to talk about is a new construction project um, in Quincy, Massachusetts, a 140 unit project called the Watson. Um, a similar theme here that this is a, a mixed income project. And in fact, in Massachusetts, was, this was the first uh, project of its type utilizing workforce housing dollars um, from Mass Housing, which is the equivalent of uh, the Connecticut Housing Finance Authority, for those of you who are familiar with that. Again, a mix of income levels, unrestricted market rate units, some workforce housing units, some moderate uh, affordable housing units. But all of the finishes in all of the units are identical. You can walk into any unit, um, and it could be unit in, in any income tier or an unrestricted market tier. Uh, it's, they're indistinguishable. And finally, the Brighton Green project, um, another new construction project, this one in Boston, Massachusetts, in the Brighton neighborhood. Uh, and this is one where we partnered with the Bright, uh, Bright Marine Healthcare Organization. They're a group that serves veterans and provides healthcare and housing services to them. And we located the building on their campus in Brighton, across the street from the MBTA Green Line. Um, again, this is a mixed income housing project. There's a mix of very low income uh, for veterans requiring services, some workforce housing, some unrestricted market rate housing, um, as well as some amenity space in the building. Um, and you'll see something that we all also focus on in addition to the, um, the energy efficiency aspect of the project is looking projects location that are close proximity to transit, um, which is why the, the Campbell Crane site is, is such a great opportunity 
being so close to the westerly Amtrak station and being located in a dense walkable community. So a little bit about the project that we're proposing, and this is a, a rendering of the project uh, prepared for us by our architects, the architectural team. Uh, the project is an 82 unit rental project uh, located at the former Campbell Brain site, right on the Pocketuck River. Uh, for reference, it's located just behind the Best Eaton, the olive oil store, and the uh, Avaca woodworking uh, stu uh, studio factory uh, on what's currently a blighted and underutilized parcel of land in central downtown Pocketuck. Um, and what we've heard is that the, you know, the downtown Pocketuck and Westerly are, are very vibrant and this parcel has been uh, a nice floor for a long period of time, of course, when it was a, uh, the former grain mill, but ever since the, the building has been knocked down and it's just a vacant parcel. And um, so what we're proposing here is something to activate the space and create activity there while introducing new residents who can support the existing businesses in downtown Pocketuck can utilize the Amtrak station in Westerly and be great event, great assets to the downtown. Uh, as part of the project, we would be uh, leaving the open space along the river open and creating a, a, a walking path there. Uh, we know the town has long-term aspirations to extend the river walk uh, up north past North property. So we envision that the, this site would be a part of that uh, overall project and we'd create a small portion of that directly on our site. Um, and as I mentioned earlier, the, the site is surrounded by commercial uses, which we find to be very successful in these urban style uh, mixed use developments. While we're not providing mixed use directly on the site, the residential directly benefits all of the surrounding businesses. Um, and we would be happy to introduce new neighbors for all of those businesses. The project would be financed using uh, financing from the Connecticut Housing and Finance Authority, CHFA, and the Connecticut Department of Housing, which is a competitive funding source. And we part of that application requires um, the local support that we've been finding so far in the conversations we've had with neighbors. And uh, we hope that the, the people on this presentation or who stopped by later this afternoon for the open house will also be able to lend to the project. Um, and as part of that, we're, we're happy to answer any and all questions you have uh, in relation to the project. So just getting into a little bit more detail about what we're proposing, the 82 units would be a mix of studios, one bedrooms, two bedrooms, and three bedroom units. There uh, would be one, more than one parking space per unit at the, at the site, which is greater than what's required by zoning code. So we're trying to go above and beyond to make sure we're accommodating all of the parking needs on the site. The building itself would be a four-story structure, wood frame structure over a concrete parking garage. So there would be a mix of both garage parking and surface parking. We would leave space open along the Pocketuck River, uh, which would include some, uh, some public access and some data dedicated resident amenity space within the building itself, but also in the exterior uh, to create a exterior private rented resident amenity space. And this picture, this diagram here uh, just highlights what I was, uh, what I was just saying. Um, so the access off of the access to the project will primarily be off of Cogswell Street. You turn off of West Broad Street onto Cogswell Street. This is the, the river here to orient that everyone. There'd be a surface parking lot. And then you would turn into a garage for parking. The building would have a, a lot of resident leasing office and a full-time property manager, full-time maintenance staff who would help with the upkeep of the property. And then on the second floor, which is about at the railroad level of the site, 
we would begin the 82 residential units with a mix of studios, ones, twos, and three bedroom units. And, and these are just several renderings of what the project would look like. So this is from the westerly side of the Pocketuck River, uh, looking towards, this is the railroad track behind the building. This is the Avaca woodworking shop. This is what it looks like from above the, the Amtrak line. So this is the Amtrak line here, Cogswell Street here, and in the background behind the buildings, West Broad Street. And this is what the property, what the building would look like from approximately, uh, if you're standing in front of Bogues Alley on the corner of West Broad Street and Cogswell Street. Um, as you can see, even though it's a four-story building and the buildings in front of it are smaller because the lot is set so far back from West Broad Street and Cogswell Street, it's actually very difficult to see the building with the existing structures with the uh, best eat in particular blocking most of the view. And then during the summer months, the, the leaves on the tree is blocking the, the rest of the view. So just a little bit about our timeline. Uh, we're currently going through the planning and zoning process with the town. Um, it's really important that we have these kinds of conversations now prior to the formal planning and zoning commissions to make sure that we're uh, listening to all of your questions and concerns and addressing them ahead of time. So we're proposing a project um, that people within the community are, are happy with. Following the planning and zoning process, we'll submit our application to CHFA and DOH in the fall. Uh, if awarded, it will be awarded in the spring to break, construct, break ground and construction in uh, about November of next year. And then we'd be ready for move-in in the spring of 2023. So one of the large components of this project is the fact that it's an inclusive and mixed income program. Um, this is something that is fairly unique to the way that wind develops properties and has been very well received in the other communities that we do work in um, and has been very successful in terms of uh, creating places that people want to live. So within the building, there will be income restrictions for, for various income tiers, and I can talk a little bit about what that means, as well as some unrestricted market rate units. So within the building, within the 82 units, approximately 30% of the units are unrestricted market rate units. And what that means is anyone who can afford to pay the rent can live within those units. Um, the rents are sized to be uh, targeted to, to market rate renters, and you know, we expect to charge the top of the market rents for these. Um, for a three-person household, it's probably a household income of, of $75,000. And this is, we envision is professionals, high-income earners, two-income households. Um, but within the building, the other 70% of the units are tiered for uh, people earning lower incomes than, uh, than two professionals with, uh, with high income jobs. So we have a set of the building, about 15% of the building for 80% area median income or AMI households. In, in uh, Stonington right now, that's about $73,000 for a three person household. So some mid-level workers, professionals, some other two income households. About 40% of the units are set aside for households earning 50% of the area median income. So for a three person household, it's about $46,000, which is a much lower income threshold. And, and so the rent would also be lower for those units. And that in, in the area is a starting salary for a teacher, a policeman, municipal employee. And then finally, we have 15% uh, of the units set aside for 30% of the area median income, which is the lowest income tier at the property. That's about someone or a three-person household earning about $27,000 a year. And that can include administrative workers, part-time workers, uh, retirees on a fixed income salary or fixed income. Uh, so really within the building, we're encapsulating a wide swath of people 
who are already living in Pocketuck, right in Stonington, um, who would be who could be looking for a new place to live in, in a new building, centrally located, close to amenities, right on the river. Wynn is a rent-based housing provider, which means everyone moving into the building has to prove that they're able to pay the rent in the building. So if we do screen all tenants for uh, background check and credit worthiness. So there, there is a fairly rigorous process in order to be accepted to, to live in the building. Um, but we're, we're we've done this successfully in other properties and had, have created very dynamic and lively uh, communities that people are, are very happy to, to live in. And Matt, I don't know if you said this, but this is, this is not new for when. We have a lot of properties in our portfolio that we've developed and managed that have this type of income to it. And there's no differentiation, right? right? So the units are the same for the 30 as, as they are for the 50 or the 80 of the market as far as, far as fit and finish. And they're equally dispersed throughout the building. So it's thought out. It's not, it really is inclusive zoning, uh, inclusive housing. And it's something that we are very familiar and comfortable with. And frankly, it's, oh, this is really our expertise. Is, um, and this is what we do. And this is what we want to propose at, at the property here. So. Um, again, I think this is a very important slide for a lot of the community and residents to see and understand what type of people would be living at this at this property. And that's it. Actually, I think I lost the, the contact. Yeah. So um, in this portion, we can turn it over to the Q and A portion of the presentation um, again just to, to repeat and we'll, we'll throw some instructions up um, if you have any questions please type them into the chat box feature of the webex um, you can also raise your hand if you'd like for your mic to be unmuted and we can unmute you for you to ask your question or you're participating by phone you can dial star three to raise your hand and we can unmute you and, and you can ask your question that way. And then finally, um, in about half an hour or so, we'll wrap up the Q&A. We'll move into the main hall of the, of the fire station. Um, and anyone is welcome to come by, speak to us in person from, uh, from six feet away. Uh, and uh, we're happy to just show you additional photographs and pictures of, of what we're proposing um, at the Campbell Brain site. So with that, we'll uh, move to the Q&A. All right, so we received our first question, um, and it's, it's multiple questions, so we'll, we'll take it in parts. Uh, will there be any public parking, and what is the size of the public access parking? So there is no public parking on the site. All of the spaces that we're proposing to build are for residents only. There is pedestrian access just along the riverfront. Uh, we'll, so will Wynn build and upkeep the public access and our parking? So we, we would build and maintain our, our own parking. Uh, will Wynn release their upkeep and renovation plans to keep up the property and update the property in accordance with their build product lifespan? And, and Lori, so uh, Lori Ricci is a senior vice president from Wynn Residential, which is Wynn's property management arm. Lori, do you want to talk a little bit about how we manage properties and how we maintain it um, after we've finished the construction? Yeah, sure. So we, we have very high standards for how we manage the property. We maintain it in the same fashion as it's delivered to us at the time of construction. As Adam mentioned, development and management work hand in hand. So um, we have very high standards for continuing to upkeep the property and maintain it in the same condition as when it's initially delivered to us. 
of course, over the years, there could be uh, something new that comes out in terms of efficiency or uh, you know, amenity that residents have asked for that perhaps we can evaluate whether or not we enhance the project over time. But at the very least, it is maintained to the same high quality standards as how it's delivered uh, when, the, when the property is first introduced to the community. And, and I would echo also to it. Adam mentioned this earlier. We are long term owners. We're long term holders of our community. We don't we don't build and develop something and, and then sell it and leave. We intend to, to own and operate the property you know, for the long term. We've, we still manage the first property that Wynn ever developed uh, to this day, so almost 50 years uh, to the day. So I think it's, it's important to emphasize that just because we want to be part of the community. We want to take care of the property. We want to be proud of what we develop and own and manage. I think just in closing, the way that we're able to um, become successful with the next, next project is how we manage the last project. So that really um, helps us to uh, build a reputation in the community and have the next community or the next project be successful because uh, people in the community can see how we're maintaining the existing project. Um, all right, so the, the next question was, uh, what is the market rent amount established uh, and we have any commercial spaces right now or in the future. Um, so I'll start with the second one. So there's no no commercial space included in the project. Um, and part of that is the fact that it is a back lot off of West Broad Street. So there's no direct frontage on what's effectively the, the main drag through, through the downtown. Um, we view our project more as supporting the existing commercial spaces that are already in downtown. And we want to make sure that our, uh, our commercial neighbors continue to be successful in terms of the market rate space, the, the market rents. Uh, we're working through uh, determining those uh, with our, our leasing consultants. And obviously, there will be updated as we get closer to completing the project, which won't be done until uh, about 2023, um, but the market rents will, will we expect are going to be the top of the market for the area. All right. Uh, the next question is in regards to zoning and uh, variances. Um, so the project is an 830G project. Uh, no variances requested. And we'll be uh, we'll be submitting our, our formal application in the near future uh, to appear on the agenda of the Planning and Zoning Commission. The next question that was about a traffic study. So I think we're certainly aware of the traffic. Um, we're taking that into consideration, and we're undergoing a traffic study now, right? So I think that I don't have an answer for the signalization, uh, shutting down a bridge, but I think that's something that is very important to us and to the community and something we're looking at uh, understanding better. That's right. Okay. Uh, the next question was about uh, parking and how the parking on Cogswell Street will be addressed and increases in traffic will be addressed. So as Adam mentioned, we're, we've got a planning study underway, I'm sorry, a traffic study underway that's, uh, that's looking at the site. The preliminary findings has been that the, the new residential structure is it's a minimal impact to the new traffic generation. We are looking at some, making some improvements uh, at West Broad Street to help ease the flow of traffic turning in and off of Cogswell Street. But we're not anticipating any modifications to the parking that's currently on Cogswell Street. In addition, the parking that we're proposing on the site exceeds what's required by zoning in the PV zone, the PV5 zone. Uh, currently, zoning only requires one-to-one -one parking space for residential buildings. We're actually exceeding that with what we're proposing on the site. <laughs> Okay, I think those are the questions that have been uh, asked so far in the chat box. Um, do we have anyone who's uh, raising their hand? Okay. 
All right, well, we'll, we'll give it another few minutes if, uh, if people want to ask additional questions in the chat box. Um, and again, uh, starting at about 630, we'll be in the, the lobby of the, the firehouse uh, taking questions in person. Anything big we missed? Anything big we missed on the question? All right, so, so we just received uh, one additional um, one additional question can the appearance of the building be adjusted um so we've been working with uh with architectural team or, or architects um to create the design and the the precedent for um for this building is the old mill structures and the long rectilinear structures that uh or you can still be found to this day uh in pocket and stonington or in our all across new england um the site itself, um, as many of you may be aware, is pretty challenging given its size. It's about two acres large um, and given its shape. So it's a long, skinny, linear uh, linear site that has some topography or, or height change issues that we're, we're having to deal with as we uh, propose a building here. So the, the appearance of the building um, may change between now and when we submit our formal planning and zoning uh, in the sense that the maybe color scheme might change or our material may be swapped out here and there. Um, but the, the building as it appears in the rendering um, is about what we expect it to look like when it's completed. Um, if people have specific uh, questions or comments or concerns about the building design, we, uh, we're, we're happy to, to hear those out. Um, but in terms of the, the general appearance, uh, what we're proposing is what we expect to complete. We can't hear you. I'm unmuted. 